Hey there, I'm Lucas Bond with the Missouri Department of Conservation, and today on Habitat Hints, we're going to talk about prescribed fire, but in a unique way. We're in, we're in southeast Missouri, and on private property, honestly, just right in someone's backyard pretty well, and they wanted a prescribed fire to help pollinators. Really cool time, cool discussion. We're going to talk with MDC's Austin Dixon. Austin's going to tell us all we need to know about what happened here and let you know on why this was so such an important prescribed fire. Let's turn this around and let's talk with Austin. All right, Austin, here is the prescribed fire where we were in probably early September. Tell us all about this prescribed burn and why it was done and so forth. Yeah, Lucas, so we're here in Charleston, Missouri on a private CRP ground, and these landowners came to me a couple years ago talking about how they had some trees encroaching. This is a grassland CRP. Mm -hmm. um, they had some trees encroaching on part of it. And also, these landowners are very pollinator oriented. They have a lot of hummingbird feeders. They love the butterflies and the bees. And the little blue stem and broom sedge had kind of outcompeted and taken over the field. And so, these late summer, early fall burns are really good for um, increasing forbs and wildflowers and kind of knock, it doesn't completely get rid of the grasses, but it knocks them back and kind of restores the, the seed bank a little bit. Um, so that was one, and then we were also trying to, the, the landowner was cutting trees on his own, and we were trying to uh, decrease his workload and kill off some of the trees. Um, there were some cattle repair trees out here. Those are an invasive that we struggle with a lot in southeast. We are constantly fighting those on these kind of properties. Uh, they also had sweet gums, ash, and maple, and so, all trees that are not, they're native but not supposed to be here, and so we're just trying to restore it to what it's supposed to look like. So Austin, tell us, you know, why burn in early fall or late summer like this? What, what are we going to see uh, growth back? I mean, are we expecting good vegetation back for pollinators? Is that the whole purpose of this? Yep. So this time of year is when the grasses are starting to seed out down here, the blue stems and burning right now before they can drop the seed on the ground will knock back that seed bank. And when we seed these, there's usually around 20 forbs or wildflower species that are included in the seed mix. And over time, they just get out competed if the grasses are really thriving. And so that's why we're burning in late fall is the forbs and wildflowers are mostly past their uh, blooming stages. So they've already contributed to the seed bank and we're really focusing on knocking the grasses back from how thick they were. So what, what will it look like here in a uh, couple weeks, you know, before winter, will we have yep. some vegetation back? Yep, so we timed it so that um, it would have time to kind of have vegetation grow back to uh, probably around knee level because down here, there's not a lot of habitat like this. We're, we're in heavy crop ground. And so there's a lot of rabbits, so there's a, some quail and a lot of songbirds on this property. And we wanted to time it to give the grasses and vegetation a chance to come back and provide a little cover over winter for them. So it's a unique property, a unique opportunity. I mean, gearing it, because a lot of times you just do some prescribed burns, but this one's unique because we're doing it mainly for monarchs and doing it for pollinators and so forth, right? Yep. All right, where it, can people, go ahead. I was gonna say the other issue is being that it's in the landowner's backyard, they were very leery of doing a chemical application out here. They really wanted to have a natural restoration process go on. Well, good deal. And this is something that you would possibly do how many years to keep it going? Uh, we, we typically, it depends on the property and how it looks, but we burn these grasslands every three to four years when weather permitting and available. All right, all right. Yep. Austin, where can people learn more about this pres uh, prescribed burns for uh, monarchs and pollinators and so forth? Yeah, we have a few pages on our website that go over prescribed burning and improving your property for private landowners. But you can also call into your local USDA office and talk with NRCS and your local private land conservationist. Each county has one and they'll be able to come out and meet with you or just talk to you on the phone and give you recommendations and advice. All right, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much, Austin. And thank you for tuning in today for Habitat Hints. Again, I'm gonna echo what Austin said. If you'd like to learn more about prescribed burns or if you'd like to talk to your private lands conservationist to get more information about the importance of prescribed burns and so forth on your property, just check out our website at mdc.mo.gov. Thank you and have a great rest of the day.